Welcome back. Today we're revisiting a clip from our interview with Jeff Booth, technology leader and author of The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is Key to an Abundant Future. In his book, Jeff writes, human intelligence is just error correction, and human intelligence is being moved into computers at a very fast rate. Jeff foresees a future where labor, more efficient and intelligent through AI, could replace traditional jobs at an unprecedented rate. I wrote something else in the book that said, um, human intelligence is just error correction. And so what's happening is, is that human intelligence is being moved into computers at a very fast rate, and it's going to merge at some, at some point down, down the road, and it's going to merge and today you can see some of the productivity gains that it can apply to, uh, to work today in a, in the digital realm. And it's, it's behind the scenes in most things you do removing labor at a crazy rate, whether the labor has gone yet, or it's about to go, it's going to remove labor at a crazy rate. Uh, you have artificial intelligence is moving at that, pr uh, that rate. Mm -hmm. That's the exponential rate. And, and people are measuring uh, I would say people are looking at a frame of a movie instead of watching the movie. So they're thinking, okay, I can handle this rate of artificial intelligence here. It's going to make my productivity better. So they start using it and prices fall. And the people who use it gain most of the value, whether you're a business or a user, super user of it, you're gaining most of the value from prices falling. And, and if other people who aren't using it are going to zero, um, <clears throat> whether their business is going to zero in time, whether they're going to zero because they're not on the leading edge. So yeah. if the doll, if it took a hundred dollars in, uh, in value and it went to 60 and you took most of the 60 because you were the super user of artificial intelligence and you knew how to use it uh, for free, then you would build a better business than the person that was living in the old world. Yeah. And then somebody will do it for it to you at $40. And then, then 20 and, and prices will fall as a result of that competition. So the people that are essentially what you're doing, what the world is doing right now is with their actions to compete, to give more value to people who use their services or to make more value, to make more money for themselves in this system, they're racing in training the artificial intelligence faster with all of their work. And that's becoming better and better and better. And it pretty, and at some point it won't need you. So, uh, so there's a short term game it, 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 that everybody should learn these tools as fast as they can, mm -hmm. because you'll win more of the economic energy by doing it by, uh, by doing so. But the long term gain is prices accelerate to zero faster. If labor on your labor is going to be $5 an hour, mm -hmm. and it doesn't need a coffee break, and it doesn't need union fees, it doesn't everything, everything else. Um, and it's more intelligent than you. What job is safe? We asked our macro expert, Jens Nordvig, to discuss the implications of AI on the global economy. He highlighted the efficiency gains brought about by AI, but questioned whether these gains will translate into increased demand. He argued that the profits generated by AI will likely contribute to greater inequality unless governments intervene. The barrier to entry that the, the leaders in the AI space have is this access to incredible amounts of data that other people would have to buy. They have it for free actually. And that does mean that the profits that these companies can generate to have a kind of protection that an industrial company, a chemicals company, a car manufacturer in a traditional sense will not have. And I think that does mean that uh, it's hard to say that that leadership that they have now is just going to evaporate when they get more competition. It is actually harder to compete with them as opposed to traditional com companies and traditional industries that the efficiency gains that is coming out of this technology is not necessarily going to boost demand. Like we, I, I saw Steven Spielberg made uh, some comments over the last couple of weeks about, okay, producing movies is going to be dramatically cheaper, right? Because the technology uh, is getting cheaper and cheaper. We can do really, uh, really advanced things um, in terms of special effects and AI generated movie content that is going to be cheaper and cheaper, right? But is that going to in increase the demand for movies? Not obvious, not obvious. So, uh, so um, I think uh, I think we are going to have these efficiency gains and uh, the additional profits are likely to go uh, to a significant degree to some very very big players, as we've already discussed. And um, therefore, in very simple terms, it's going to uh, 
be a sort of part of 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 greater inequality unless governments do something to intervene, right? Jens went on to address the macroeconomic impact of AI on interest rates. He acknowledged the cyclical effects of COVID and rising rates dominating the short term. While optimistic about AI's potential to boost productivity growth, he cautioned that squeezing additional productivity becomes increasingly challenging. He predicted a lift in productivity growth from the current 1%, but he remained conservative, estimating a peak around 1.5%, emphasising that AI, whilst transformative, may not fully replicate the productivity gains of the mid-90s. If you think we're enter- entering an era where uh, productivity growth is going to be dramatically higher, then that is also going to have an impact on what you think equilibrium interests are. The, this uh, famous or infamous concept of our star equilibrium interest rates and most people argue that there's some kind of a link between productivity growth, structural growth, equilibrium growth in the economy and what that equilibrium interest rate is. And um, we've now, over the last 15 years, been through a period of very low productivity growth. Call it one yeah. percent, yeah. uh, right? So the growth we see in GDP is a function of whatever kind of demographic growth we have and that labor productivity growth, and uh, it's been incredibly low. If you go back to the early, well, call it mid nineties, uh, we have very very strong productivity growth, and yeah. um, and uh, like in some some years three to four, right? So it's not like a little bit higher than what we have been used to in the last fifteen years, but like. Um, multiples bigger so so the ones who who believe that interest rates might go a lot higher the ones that think that the ai effect is gonna uh, actually be so powerful that it might lift overall productivity uh, in, a, in a very meaningful way it's fascinating and it's exciting right but if i put on sort of my economist uh, economist hat and think about okay how is it going to really impact the macro? We already talked about, okay, from a consumption's perspective, we might have a situation where the, the wealth kind of falls in a very unequal way and therefore consumption is not going to be so supported. But I think there's also a time frame um, issue. So um, when you ask CEOs about, okay, when will they harvest the fruits of these AI investments, most of them say in three to five years' time, Right. So it's not something that is going to be like a big boost on January 1, 2024, right? Um, it, it's going to come with a lag. And it might be that we're looking into 26, 27, where before we can really see it in productivity. So in terms of how interest rates are set right now in the market and how the Fed is going to think about interest rates, it's going to be hard to really have conviction that these AI effects is going to totally dominate GDP figures and so forth. Like we have incredible cyclical swings still from COVID effects, stimulus coming out of the equation and so forth. And those effects have been enormous. And I think in the short term, together with the lagged effects of just having uh, risen rates, it's probably going to dominate. And the other, the other argument, even if I believe strongly in AI, has to do with with this notion, and they actually spoke about that at Jackson Hole, uh, the notion that it's harder and harder to squeeze extra productivity out mm-hmm. of anything. Like So even if AI is fantastic, even if it is a revolution that's going to allow us to do new things, uh, the sort of counter argument is that if we hadn't come up with uh, AI, productivity would have gone even lower, right? So it's a counterbalance to this problem that is harder and harder to generate productivity gains. So I, I think we're probably going to get a boost to, to productivity growth in coming years. But if we think about us coming from 1% and the sort of peak of productivity growth in the, the mid-90s was 3 to 4%, uh, I think we're going to have a lift from 1%, but I don't think we're going to get close to 3 to 4%, right? So maybe we're going to get to one5 if I'm going to just... Put, put numbers out there for illustration. This is not uh, uh, precise uh, science, but that would be my, that would be my uh, best bet, right? And that's sort of a US thing, right? So if you think about where interest rates are heading, uh, like it, it matters whether productivity growth is one or one and a half, right? But it's not gonna like totally change whether we need, you know, zero interest rates or 5% or 10% interest rates. So uh, from that perspective, it also shouldn't be seen as the only force 
that is driving um, yield curves and markets. As we wrap up this 2023 special, it's clear that AI was not just a buzzword, but a transformative force that's reshaping the world before our eyes. The insights from our podcast guests, including Pedro Palandrani, Anthony Scaramucci, Arellas Augusto, Jeff Booth and Jens Nordvig, have unveiled the multifaceted impact of AI on our lives and the global economy. We've linked the full version of all interviews featured here in the episode description if you're interested in checking them out. From all of us here at Opto, happy holiday season and happy new year.